Okay, welcome to a new episode of Nate's MMA Corner. I'm Nate, and if you watch my show, you're in my corner. Today's episode is a pre-fight show for UFC Fight Night. Romero versus Machida in a middleweight clash of the ages. So it's a post-fight, uh, it's a pre-fight show of the main card, so I'll give my predictions and my two cents for each match. So let's get started with the main event, Yoel Romero versus Leoto the Dragon Machida. And uh, in that middleweight clash of ages, <laughs> yeah, so um, this is a uh, jiu-jitsu slash karate guy in Machida versus wrestler and power striker in Yuel Romero. And uh, yeah, a lot of people are picking Machida in this fight, but I think that Yuel Romero gets the upset victory here. I think he pushes the pace. Whether he gets the takedowns or not, he'll be uh, clinching with Machida a lot. And I'll open up some possible uh, uh, overhand rights, some left jabs, and stuff to just rock Leoto Machida. And I think, uh, yeah, Yoel Romero gets this done. First or second round, TKO, and uh, upsets, yeah, just with a big upset victory on this one. I think uh, Machida's coming back way too soon uh, off of a really bad loss. I think Machida, had he waited a little bit longer, let his body heal, clear his mind a little bit more, I think he would stand a better chance against Yoel Romero. And I think Yoel Romero, he's had plenty of time to heal up, plenty of time to get back on the saddle. And I think Yoel Romero will capitalize. He's full of energy, especially the first couple of rounds. I think if it goes to round three, uh, starting in round three, then it's going to favor Machida, but I think uh, Yoel Romero gets it done within the first two rounds. So uh, there you have it, first, second round knockout victory for Yoel Romero. Maybe he gets a takedown, maybe he gets a submission, but if he gets a takedown, I'm going with ground and pound rather than a submission. Then um, in the co-main event, we have... Uh, San Santiago Ponzinibbio versus uh, Lorenz Larkin, and I'm picking Lorenz Larkin in this. I think his striking is on point. He's hungry for the victory. I think he can get it done. Uh, so, yeah, you know, Lorenz Lar Larkin, you know, he's he, he's a power striker. He kickboxing extraordinaire. I think he gets it done in the first round. Uh, flashy knockout. I think uh, this is a good matchup for Lorenz Larkin. And uh, yeah, good luck, bro. Met you back in LA. Uh, you're a great guy. Um, all, all my fans out there, go on my Facebook page. Find me, Nate Craig, on Facebook. You'll see my picture with Lorenz Larkin. Uh, cool guy. Yeah. Um, then also on the main card, we have uh, Antonio Carlos Jr. versus. Eddie Gordon, uh, and this one, I got Eddie Gordon winning fairly easy, I think, maybe the first half of the first round, or maybe the first round, Antonio puts up a fight. Antonio's one of those guys where after, during the Ultimate Fighter Season 3, and shortly after the Ultimate Fighter Season 3, Brazil that is, um, you know, I, I had Antonio being this guy who's going to tear through everyone in the heavyweight division, only to find out that he drops to light heavyweight, then middleweight. I think that was a bad choice. I think, look, Antonio was successful at heavyweight. He won Ultimate Fighter Season 3 Brazil at heavyweight. And then what does he do? He immediately drops to light heavyweight, loses to Patrick Cummins. Now he's, you know, middleweight. I think it's too much. It's wearing him out. He had the the knockout power at heavyweight. It didn't seem to bother him at heavyweight with the weight. Um, and I just think the weight cuts, you know, are, are draining him. So if this were a heavyweight bout with Antonio versus uh, a run of the mill heavyweight that's not in the top 15, I think Antonio could win. But this middleweight division's looking pretty good right now. And. Uh, Eddie Gordon is a talented middleweight, and he trains at a good camp. He trains with Chris Weidman. Yeah, so 
I think Eddie Gordon gets this one done. Uh, first or second round TKO uh, victory for Eddie Gordon. Yeah, Eddie Gordon, he, he knows how to mix things up with the wrestling, uh, fake takedowns, um, and and uh, just work his, his footwork and his boxing. And I think Eddie Gordon works his boxing in this fight and gets first or second round KO slash TKO. So there you have that one. Then also on the main card, um, we have... Um, Oh yeah, the co-main event is a welterweight bout. Uh, just to clarify, this one's a middleweight bout. Uh, just, yeah. And then, um, yeah. And uh, also on the main card, we have a middleweight bout with uh, uh, Tiago Santos and uh, Steve Boss. Yeah, this is middleweight. And, yeah, Steve Boss, he's, well, he's new, uh, He's he's a new guy, and I think that uh, this is um, too much too soon for him. And I think uh, Tiago Santos gets it done. I think he gets it done in dominant fashion, maybe by a submission, but I'm leaning towards decision. Thirty twenty seven. Steve Boss. He's big for the weight class. He's strong. I think he'll be on the defense. And Santos will just push the pace and outclass him in every sense of the way. And route to 3027, unanimous decision win across the board. Yeah, then also to kick well to kick off the main card in the feather in a featherweight bout, we have Hakron Diaz versus Levon Makashvili. Man, this fight. I'm gonna go with Hakaron Diaz by decision. I just think he has more tools. He's uh, faster. But this one, yeah, it was a coin toss. I, I yeah, Makashvili, he's he's tough, and he's definitely um, gone better over time. But uh, yeah, there we have it. We have uh, three middleweight bouts, and then the co-main event, which is a welterweight clash. Uh, case I said otherwise previously. Yeah, then uh, kick off the main card. We have this featherweight clash. So this this is a good main card for the middleweight division. A lot of possible contenders down the line for middleweight division off this main card. Yeah, then uh, don't forget to check out the prelims on Fox Sports 2. And yeah, we'll see if my predictions are right. And until then, see ya.